Welcome back everyone. I think it's about time to review another board. So here I have a little preamp board. It has a bunch of little functions here which we'll mention momentarily. This was sent in from a viewer named Mike and I really appreciate that Mike for sending that in. This is a kit that you have to assemble but it was sent in already assembled so all I have to do is just hook it up and we'll uh, give it a listening test and everything. This is based on the LM4610 tone control IC. It gives you a whole set of functions here. You get volume, balance, treble, bass, and this 3D effect which you can turn on and off with this button here and this which is a loudness control. One interesting feature of this IC is that the audio signal doesn't really pass through these potentiometers for adjustment. What happens, there's a reference voltage inside the IC and they send the voltage out to the potentiometers and the center wiper arm is sent back to the chip. So whatever level you set this on, it'll adjust the voltage up or down and for example this is the volume controls so if you set the potentiometer at a certain level the wiper arm will return a voltage back to the IC and it will output the appropriate signal so even though they are using stereo type potentiometers I think they're doing that for mechanical stability so these things don't you know um, rock and break off the board easy they're a lot more sturdy than just a single line of pins. In fact on the bottom of the board one row of pins on each potentiometer is shorted together so not really used. Once the signal leaves the audio processor IC it goes on to an NE5532 which it's either a buffer or it amplifies the signal just a little bit to send it onto the uh, actual power amplifier. And I'll have to look more closely at this to see if it does amplify or not. I do see resistors around it telling me that it might be amplifying the signal somewhat. Now this board requires a center tapped transformer secondary with a total voltage of about 24 volts. That's because it gets rectified and split into a plus voltage and a minus voltage and with a 24 volt transformer those rectified voltages will be around plus and minus 17 or 18 volts and then those go through a 7805 I'm sorry a 7812 and a 7912 regulator that gives a plus and minus 12 volts for the board and this is the output and I'll just connect it to my small little amplifier here that'll go to speakers and here is the input which I'll connect to a music player okay so fire this thing up okay it makes a loud plop when you turn it on the one thing I notice I can hear some AC noise, power supply hum, I guess you would say, getting through. And also quite a bit of hiss. I have the volume turned down. As I turn it up, a lot of hiss. It's pretty noisy. Now listen when I cut the power. Listen to all the noises it makes. It makes a whole bunch of noises and then it plops and turns off. The noise is not coming any way from the power amplifier because it's still on. And besides a faint background electrical noise, if I unplug the amplifier input, it is dead silent. 
dead quiet. So all that noise is coming from the tone control board. I did check with the scope. Power supply after the regulators is nice and smooth, so that's not it. I shorted the inputs to ground to make sure no noise was being picked up there. Doesn't really sound like received electrical noise. It sounds like power supply hum. So somehow it's getting into the circuit. Um, it could be a bypass cap or something not implemented correctly on the board. I'd have to uh, check the data sheet and you know look at the schematic here or trace out the circuit and you know see how it's set up. But anyway, we'll go ahead and give a listen here. The volume. The volume starts right in the middle. You know, it's dead all the way up. See, it's completely dead. I checked the potentiometer and it's working properly. Yeah, I don't know if the camera picks that up, but the bass and treble seem to work just fine. By the way, this track is, well, it's in French. It's a band called Botany Bay. And they sing everything in English, but this one song, though, this one track they decided to do in what seems like French to me. See, so if you can hear this 3D effect, you won't hear the actual stereo part of it, but you can hear how it changes the music overall. You know, this camera doesn't have a stereo mic. Off. On. Off. On. So hopefully the camera picks that up. It has more of an ambient sound to it. I, I don't really like it. It changes the sound of the music too much for my liking. Well, time to hook up the scope and see how this thing performs. Okay, so now I've connected the output across a 1 kilo ohm resistor, each for one channel. And across that, I have the probes of the scope. So we'll take a look at the performance of this little amplifier. So I'm playing my one kilohertz signal from my music player. And I have the volume all the way up on the preamp board. And the volume is all the way up on my music player. And not getting a lot of output 1.28 volts rms so this thing um, doesn't give you a whole lot of boost but that amount of voltage still should be able to drive your amplifier the output of my music player is around 500 millivolts rms at full output so yeah i'm getting some boost I did check the gain of that just by measurement. I didn't actually check the resistors, but it's about a 2.2 times amplification from that IC there. Take a look at distortion here. This is the 1 kilohertz fundamental, the 1% 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal I added in. And the good news is not really any distortion. Maybe the tiniest blip of a fifth harmonic. This other stuff bubbling is just noise or quantization noise. You know, the scope is not a superior measurement device, so 
Distortion looks very good there. At 20 hertz, same story, no real distortion seen. Okay, I'm actually running a sweep here. And uh, around 14 kilohertz. There is a little blip of distortion there. It's nothing significant. And it does change a little bit as the frequency changes. Now we're looking at the 10 to 100 hertz sweep. Want to see how the amplitude changes or not with this? And after completing and starting back over, it is flat as a board. I was careful to have the bass and treble control set completely flat. So at the center point of the bass and treble controls, it is giving us a very flat response. Okay, now we're looking at the 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. We want to see how flat the response is. Okay, after completing that sweep, it did roll off a little bit, but that could have to do with the, uh, the accuracy of the potentiometers. I didn't see any really severe roll off. But if I adjust the treble control, you can see how it changes it. Okay, we'll take a look at the sweep with the bass and treble set all the way to max. Let me restart that. There you saw it started out really high, shrunk down. And as the frequency increases, the treble boost will bring the signal back up. Well, I must say, I'm not really that impressed with this. It has a lot of hiss. I mean, when you, you're running your amplifier, just sitting idle, and you can stand one meter away, even with the computer fan and the uh, noise from the pilot light behind me, I can still hear the hiss from the speakers. So that is kind of disappointing. And the volume control action is kind of weird. It's you don't get any signal until you turn it up about halfway. You know, I checked that out and everything looks okay. It's marked to receive a 50k potentiometer, and that's what's there. But you see that quite often in these these uh, inexpensive Chinese products. You see, you know, goofed up implementations of something that should be otherwise good. On the other hand, the uh, bass and treble, 3D effect and balance, everything seems to work good. I couldn't really show it here, but the uh, loudness works a little bit. You know, the level's up too high. Normally, uh, loudness works at the lower volume settings, but you know, since it comes on about halfway, you don't really get a large effect from the loudness. And distortion is quite low. So that wraps up the test and review of this tone control slash amp board. A couple final items before I wrap this up. There's a company called Banggood. They're a site that sells everything from electronics to clothing. They've been sending me messages every now and then wanting me to review stuff. Kind of blew them off, but... I finally sat down and got a list of things I wanted to take a look at, sent it to them, and they came back with three items that they're supposed to send to me. I, you know, I don't know if it's for real or not. Hopefully they do send it to me. There's some amplifier boards, you know, the higher power ones. I don't really want to spend my hard-earned money on, you know, 20, 30 bucks or more to review something I'm not going to use. Um, probably would never get that out from the video viewership. You know, if I get 6,000 views, that's not going to pay for the board. It's not enough. However, if they can send me this stuff to review, that would be great. I'll certainly do that. 
As I speak, it is Wednesday night around 10 p.m. My dad is in the hospital being prepared for open heart surgery, which will happen tomorrow. I have to get up at 5 a.m. and drive down to the hospital, and see him before he goes in. It's a pretty routine surgery. He's getting a heart valve replaced, and um, it takes four to six hours, so I'll probably be spending most of my day down at the hospital and hoping that goes well. And, uh, you know, as I speak, this already happened because, you know, I have to edit and upload this and it's a little too late now to do that. I got to hit the hay because I got to get up early. And, yeah, a little slow on the videos. I Like I said before, I like to get a couple videos up a week and I'm not really been doing that. Well, the last few I, I think I did okay, but would like to get a couple videos up a week. It really helps with the channel. And um, appreciate the 15,000 subs. Hey, I really appreciate you watching and uh, catch you next time.